My name is Stuart Hirsch. Uh, I'm Dick Dessner. My name is Allison Hirsch. My name is Christopher Tong. Rebecca Hang Nguyen. Nikolai Levenstone. Connie Prado. Caroline Gordy. My name is Lubinka Kozowski. John Mattis. My name is Eric Peterson. And I am here to help. This is the first uh, trip that MOU has taken to Ecuador and I was expecting to work hard and learn a lot and that's exactly what happened. I always wanted to do an outreach ever since I started at NYU. I knew that coming into this dental school. Scissors. Every outreach needs service, teaching, and research. This is no different. The outreach program is a really good learning experience for the students in addition to the service that we're providing, in addition to the research that we're doing, um, the education is really number one. My clinical skills have increased multiple times over. I've gotten quicker, I've gotten more confident, I feel just, I, I just feel like I've learned so much clinically here that it's been incredible. Today I also work with uh, Dean Hirsch. The first thing to do is check the occlusion, put a football diamond on, see, see, see. So ideally, ideally contour the lingual with the football and then you're finished. Okay. With him on your shoulder directing you um, when you need help, um, it, it's just a, a fabulous experience. interested in, in bringing this outreach this help to people but also to do a study where they can use this as a model that they can use in other parts of the world. All outreaches we aim toward treating the community but we focus on children. All the research is focused on the children. When children come in a dentist and a student screen the children. Uh, facial cavity, I'm sorry. Uh, but bring it's back mobile, out. so no treatment. Abre muy grande, mi amor. Then they figure out what needs to be done, perform dentistry that's needed. And they also seal all the first molars, and then they follow it up with toothbrushing in the classroom and fluoride varnish. And then I think we are trying to come back next year and maybe for a couple years and see if it helps the oral health of the children. With the children, it's also a lot of refined carbohydrates in their diet. If preventive care can stop this process from going on, if by brushing two minutes every day in the school with fluoridated toothpaste becomes a habit, they'll take that with them. On this program in particular in Ecuador, we have rolled out uh, a new program, which is um, using tablet PCs. Uh, we worked at the company uh, called Myco to develop a, a tablet system um, and a Wi-Fi service system that's all offline so that we can actually collect this very important baseline data and we'll be doing that for every trip going forward. Well, it's only when you get, when you do treatment, it's completely different, okay. all right? And then we're done, all right? Okay. When we come back next year, we'll basically do the same thing and I can then compare first trip versus second trip, um, whether or not our treatment on this trip has actually affected the kids in one year's time in terms of their oral health. A veces es difícil, ¿sabe por qué? Digamos, la mayoría de la gente, casi todo, están aprovechando porque, digamos, no hay esa, ¿cómo le digo?, esa atención.
el cuidado dental, digamos, que ellos de, este, mantenerlo siempre con la higiene. Principalmente que se cepillen los dientes después de cada comida. La escuela ya estaban, eh, habían organizado todo esto para hacer el chequeo a los niños. Entonces este, ya le tocaba al grupo de él para hacer limpieza o para hacer extracción. Esta es mi cocina. Bueno, si gusta, subamos. Este es mi pequeño baño, como lo ve. <risa> eh, digamos, allí tengo mi tesoro, mi... <risa> ¡Niños! Pero como él, digamos, no tenía nada más, nomás le hicieron limpieza. Pero sí gritaba, porque creía que le iban a sacar un diente. <risa> y una cosa largo y un, y un papel y una cosa blanca. ¿Y todo el lío? ¿No? ¿Y te la regalaron un cepillo? Hoy día, digamos, pero digamos ha sido muy bonito porque a más de eso son tan delicados hasta para, digamos, tratar como para atenderlos. What is most valued on our part is that they gain a greater understanding of the issue of access to care. These people understand that they need care often and they want care, but they just actually aren't able to receive it. This issue exists in Ecuador, but it does also exist in New York City. Most of these kids, it's the first time they're seeing the dentist, so they're already terrified because they've never actually been asked to lie down and open their mouth and have somebody poking and prodding around in their mouth. No, cosquillas, cosquillas, mira, cosquillas, mira, cosquillas. So you're trying to calm them down, you're trying to give them a good first impression of the dentist, but you're also in a clinic where it's not controlled, where you hear one kid screaming and another goes. And we served, I think, about 20 to 30 special needs patients that were the best patients. <laughs> it's quite an experience coming down here. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot of hard work. I mean, really, really appreciative patience. Everyone is just so grateful. Everyone that speaks to me, they, they just can't believe that this help has come to Manta and especially to treat the children that are in so much need. We've never had this much help from the local community, um, this many volunteers. It would be hard to beat this program. This is, as I've alluded to before, a win for everybody that touches it. Uh, we just want to say thanks to everybody, of the group of professionals that come today. It's really important to us to help for every single kid here in the life.